GSRB6 is all about the beginnings of trigonometry and the first worksheet or two is just the building of those ideas of trigonometry. I'll spend most of my time under the Alamo to look at the specifics of this. Let me just hit kind of uh, a bit of the bridging ideas here. You and I recognize the 30, 60, 90 triangles that are drawn here. They are one smaller than the other. Let's say this side was a 4 here and maybe this side is a 6. You and I know, because we've just investigated special right triangles, that there are fixed ratios here. That because this is a 30, 60, 90, this has to be 8, and this has to be 4 root 3. Over here, we would know the same. This would have to be 12, and this would have to be 6 root 3. The reason you and I know that is because a 30, 60, 90 triangle has proportions locked into it. These are similar triangles. The same thing would be true for any set of triangles. If we had a, a set of triangles that looked like this where it was 10, uh, 80, and then we made another one that was 10 and 80. The truth is, is that these two triangles, while you and I may be less familiar with them about the physical numbers, the truth is, is that their sides will be proportional to each other. It won't matter whether it's a big or a small triangle. They will be proportional to each other. And so what we study in trigonometry is this idea that triangles of all angles, right triangles of all angles, lock in three specific ratios. And those ratios are just the comparisons of these these sides, the three sides. And so you can compare uh, these, these to each other. Um, they, they will hold certain uh, relationships and certain values. Finally, as a way to talk about these sides in a clear way, we give them some names. And I'll do these in a second, but let me just talk to you briefly before we get there. Um, if this is the reference angle we're talking about, we have three names in a right triangle. An adjacent side, uh, an opposite side, and a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the easiest because it's the longest side and it's opposite the 90. The adjacent angle uh, side, sorry, is always the one beside the angle. And then the opposite is the one that does not form the angle. Do you see how the hypotenuse and the adjacent form the angle? And so we refer to this as the opposite side. Now, just to uh, show you this idea, and then we'll review it in just a second. Uh, if the angle we were talking about is up here, though, we would then describe this as the adjacent beside it. This is still the hypotenuse, and then the opposite would be over here. We'll take a look at that over here. The heart of trigonometry is uh, labeling triangles to make sure we label things correctly. And labeling all depends on the reference angle, as we've already mentioned. But I'll quickly go over it again. If we're using angle A as our reference angle, our adjacent side and our hypotenuse are the two that form that angle always. The opposite side angle that we're uh, using is our reference. So this is the opposite side. So if we were over in this corner as our angle of reference, um, our adjacent would be here. Our hypotenuse is always the longest side across from the 90. And then the opposite is the one that does not form that angle. Now you and I have learned a few things about, uh, about triangles that are 30, 60, 90. And I've got a 30, 60, 90 set here. And uh, we know that these are all similar because of AA. And we all know the relationships of these from our previous work. And so we know that in a special right triangle of 30, 60, 90, that the ratio of the short to the, uh, to the hypotenuse is double, and going this would be, would be 3 root 3. If this is a 5, this would have to be a 10, and this would be 5 root 3. If this is 8, this would be 16, and this would be 8 root 3. Now, part of what we learn here is there are three ways, basically. There are others, I guess, but basically three ways to compare sides here. 
Uh, one way is to compare an opposite side to a hypotenuse. Another is to compare the uh, adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So let's take a look. So op op opposite, if we're using the 30 here, opposite to hypotenuse would be this way. Adjacent to hypotenuse would be this comparison. And then the last comparison would be the opposite and adjacent sides compared as well. Now these three ratios, uh, we give them a name. And that name is called, uh, this one's called sine. This one's called cosine. And this one's called tangent. And uh, these ratios uh, provide us a relationship. And so um, if we're looking at, at these guys here, if we wanted to know the sine ratio of a, an angle, it would be opposite to hypotenuse. Where in this case, the sine of a 30 degree angle would be 3 over 6. Or as a decimal, that would be 0 0.5. So again, what this means is that the sine ratio of a 30 degree angle is its opposite over its hypotenuse value. Now the other one is called cosine, sometimes written as just COS, and it, it represents the adjacent to the hypotenuse ratio. And so if we were to do the cosine of that same 30 degree angle, cosine would be the adjacent, which would be 3 root 3 over 6. And then finally, uh, the tangent ratio, written as tan, of an angle is its opposite to its adjacent. And in this case, the tangent of 30 would be 3 over 3 root 3. Well, let me just talk to you about a couple of things um, students use to remember these ratios. Some students use so, ka, Toa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now just for the sake of it, I, I want to uh, record what these values come out to be. So the sine ratio of 30 is 3 to 6, came out to be 0.5. Let me just grab my calculator and, and take 3 square root 3 and divide it by 6 and I get uh, I get a value of about 0 0.866 and if I take 3 and I divide it by 3 square root 3 I get a value of a point, about 0.577 now understand that while I use this triangle to get these three ratios Understand that because the proportionality is the same, the ratios of, of all of those would match the same, right? 5 is to 10 would be a half. Uh, 8 to 16 would be a half. Um, if we were doing uh, cosine, it would be 5 root 3 to 10, or 8 root 3 is to 16. They would all still produce this number. So what we're learning is a very powerful idea called trigonometry. And what it says is that if you know the angle, the angle will tell you the ratio. In other words, it doesn't matter how big or small the triangle is. If it's a 30 degree right triangle, that ratio will be 0.5. Cosine is the same, is that it's, it's the comparison of an uh, an adjacent to an hypotenuse of a 30 degree triangle and there will be its value and then finally tangent will be the same idea tangent of 30 will be the opposite over the adjacent and you will get this number now what takes place is that those numbers are all placed in a table now we don't use tables anymore but I want you to kind of understand here, first of all, let's see what this table says. This table keeps track of the degrees and then the sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's scroll down to 30 degrees. And you're going to see there are the three numbers that I just wrote down. And what this is saying is that if you're looking at a 30 degree right triangle, 
the sine ratio will be 0.5, the cosine ratio will be 0.866, and then the tangent will be 0.577. And what these other numbers are is that they've calculated them for a 36 degree and a 42 degree and, uh, and a 67 degree. In other words, these ratios are fixed. They're locked in. Because the shape can get larger and smaller, but because it gets proportionally larger or smaller, the ratios are unchanged. So what you're looking at happens to be, it's called a trig table, and it represents all of those ratios. Now the good news is you've got a calculator that can do this kind of thing. Let's just do an example here um, where I'll show you uh, how we can pull that up in our calculator and uh, it will it will give us a value. So let's just try one here that we can see in our group. For instance, 25 tangent is, is this number. So if I do uh, 25 tangent of 25, see the ratio it gives me 0 .4, 0 0.466. Well, that number is right here, 0.466, and so on. And so if I wanted to uh, find the sine ratio of a 75 degree uh, triangle, so I do sine of 75, and I'm looking for 0.965, and there it is there, to see how um, it quickly um, holds all of those numbers for us. So a trig table, while it is a little antiquated, is actually a nice way to get an idea of how these things all work, which is the idea that uh, your ratios must be fixed in, in the calculations of these things. So let me just do a couple of quick things here, and then we'll switch to a different video here. But um, let me just go to the 30 degree, or let's go to 45 for a second. That's also a special right triangle uh, that we should be aware of. The reason sine and cosine have the same ratio here is because the adjacent and the opposite sides are equal in a 45-45 right triangle, which is a, which as you know is a special right triangle, that is a right isosceles. Two sides are the same. So if you're using this 45 degree, the opposite two hypotenuse will be the same as this adjacent two hypotenuse. And why is tangent equal to one? Because opposite and adjacent are equal in size, and so on. Lots of other things to learn uh, from a trig table.